So in this problem, we have two particles. Particle A is projected horizontally from a point 55 meters above the ground with speed u meters per second. At the same time, particle B is projected at an angle theta above the horizontal from a point 20 meters above ground level, directly below the point of projection of particle A, with speed 3u meters per second. The particles collide one second after they are projected. Find the value of theta and the value of u. Now there's a lot of information going on there, so I would strongly recommend drawing a diagram so we can visualise the problem. If it's tricky, draw a picky. So here we go. Here's some axes. Uh, let's draw particle A first. So it's projected horizontally from a point 55 metres above the ground with speed u metres per second. So it's projected horizontally, so it's going to do something like this. So that point is 55, and it's projected horizontally with a speed of u metres per second. At the same time, particle B is projected at an angle theta above the horizontal from a point 20 metres above ground level, directly below the point of projection of particle A. So it's projected from somewhere here, let's say there, at 20 metres above the ground, at an angle of theta, so it's going to do something like this. So here's your angle, theta, and the speed is 3u metres per second. So this is going to be particle B, and this is particle A. And they intersect one another, or they collide, when t is equal to 1. So that is when t is equal to 1. OK, so what I would recommend at this point is to start setting up your SUVAP for both particles. And let's just see what happens. So for particle A, we're going to have x and y direction, s, u, v, a, t. And for particle B, let's put particle B over here. We're going to have x and y horizontal and vertical direction, and then we're going to have s, u, v, a, t, like so. So let's just start filling in the information that we know. So for particle A, um, we've got it is projected horizontally at a speed of u, so the initial velocity is u and 0. And it is, uh, what is acceleration, sorry, in the horizontal direction will be 0, and in the vertical direction will be minus g. OK. Right. Let's leave that for the moment. Let's go over to particle B. So for particle B, its initial speed in the horizontal direction will be 3u cosine theta, and in the vertical direction, 3u sine theta. Its acceleration will be 0 in the horizontal direction, and then minus g in the vertical direction. OK, now what other bits of information do we know? Because we can't really do much with that. We know that they both um, collide when t is equal to 1. So let's call that height h. OK? Now, at that height h, when t is equal to 1, they collide. So they both have the same uh, height, shall we say, at t equals 1. Now, because we're using displacement here, we need to write it in terms of displacement. So for particle A, it has travelled downwards, a vertical displacement, of 55 take away h. So its displacement vertically when t is equal to 1, so I'll put these both as 1s, its vertical displacement will be minus whatever that distance is. So 55 take away h. Now, of course, you could write that as h take away 55. OK, it's the same thing. But just for... Uh, understanding where it's come from, it's saying that we have dropped down that distance. Okay? 
So I've got that in terms of h. Let's see if we can do a similar thing for particle b. So for particle b, when t is equal to 1, its vertical displacement, well, that will have gone up to h, okay, from 20. So this will be its displacement, and so that's h take away 20. So it's a positive h take away 20. Okay? Right. So, I think we've probably got enough to go on now. So, what I want to use is the SUVAP formula looking at um, the vertical direction first, I would say, because we've got enough information there. Let's go with that. So, for particle A, we're going to go in the vertical direction, and we're going to be using... Well, because we're missing v, we're going to use SUVAT formula number 3, s equals ut plus a half at squared. So s, which is minus 55 take away h, is equal to u, which is 0 times t, so that's 0, plus 1 half times a times t squared. So this will be 0 plus 1 half times minus g times 1 squared. So that's telling me that I've got, well, I can rewrite that now as h take away 55 is equal to, well, minus a half g. So h is 55 take away a half g. That feels like a bit of progress there. I now have h in terms of g which I could hopefully use in a moment. So let's draw a line under that for the moment. And now let's look at particle B. Let's see if we can do the same thing. So we're looking in the y direction again, OK? And we're going to use the same SUVAT formula. So S here is H take away 20. And that's equal to U times t, so 3u sine theta, plus 1 half times a times t squared. So 1 half times minus g times 1 squared. Now, the h, remember, I've got as 55 take away half g, so I'll plug that in now. 55 take away half g, take away 20, well, I can just write that as 35 take away a half g. I've got the 3u sine theta, and then I've got take away a half g. So, of course, the half minus half g's can go from both sides. So I've actually got 3u sine theta is equal to... 35. Right, OK, so I've used that. I've plugged it in there, so I've now got an equation that involves both u and theta. So I've made a little bit of headway, but I can't really do anything by itself there, unfortunately, uh, because I've got two variables but only one equation to work with. So now let's go in the horizontal direction. What do we know about the horizontal direction? Well, we know that if they're colliding, then this point here, where they collide, will be the same place. So that distance there, that horizontal displacement, will be the same. So should we call that another letter? Let's call that P. So the horizontal displacement after one second for A is P, and the horizontal displacement after one second for B is P. So let's look at the horizontal direction now. Now, we'll be using, for A, the same SUVAT equation, S equals UT plus half AT squared. S here is P. So P is equal to U times T, so capital U times 1, plus a half AT squared, but A, of course, is 0. So P is equal to U. Let's do it for particle B. Now, for particle B, we've got S, which is P, is equal to U times T, so 
u cosine theta plus a half a t squared. But a is 0, so we just get p is equal to 3 u cosine theta. So we now know that p is u and p is 3 u cosine theta. So we can put those equal to one another. So capital U is U cosine, sorry, 3U cosine theta. Now capital U is not going to be zero, okay? They're not going to have um, uh, initial speeds of zero. So we're assuming here that capital U is greater than zero, right? So we can put that somewhere. So that means we can divide both sides by u. So cosine theta is a third. Now if cosine theta is a third, I can solve that to find theta. So arc cosine of one third gives us theta as 70.5 degrees to three significant figures. So that's my value of theta. And now I can go back to this equation here and say, well, OK, well, um, I, if I want to work out what u is, then u is 35 over 3 sine theta, just by rearranging that formula. So that implies that u is equal to 35 divided by 3 lots of sine theta, which is 12.4 to 3 significant figures. Um, I'm just leaving off the meters per second because I've already got the meters per second here. So u is 12.4 to 3 significant figures. OK, so this problem was... Um, quite a bit tougher um, because you've got the two particles being fired off at the same time. Um, but hopefully you'll see kind of like the way that I tackled this problem. Um, I started off with a diagram. I then started setting up what I knew about both particles and then using the SUVAT formulae to um, find some equations. It wasn't... Um, very targeted. So it wasn't like, oh, I know exactly how I need to solve this problem. It was very much plugging things in, seeing what happens, seeing what came out until I arrived at a situation that allowed me to solve equations. Okay? So for problem solving questions like this, this method is often a good way to start if you can't quite see how everything's going to come together at the end.